Hey everyone, I'm back and we have more Monster Hunter Stories 2 today and as you can see I'm in the right of channeling here because we're going to talk about the best skills in the game. I'm basically going to recap and pull together all of what I consider the best, most effective, most useful skills that you want to use on your monsties, you know, through their genes, what they are, where you get them from, and why they're so good, and all of that kind of stuff. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for more like this. And let me know in the comments what your favorite skill or genes are in the game as well, and we'll share our knowledge together in the comments down below. But let's start off by basically talking about bleed skills, because I do consider skills that apply bleed to be some of the best skills in the game for PvE and PvP. It's sort of an all-rounder, really, really good uh, skill to use, and there's a couple different skills that apply, apply bleed. There's not that many of them, though, uh, but the first one that we can actually take a look at is if we go over to Silverwind Nagakuga. You guys have seen most of my builds by now, uh, but if we go over to the Vacuum Blast, this is one of the AoE options for applying bleed. So this is medium damage with a high chance to bleed all enemies costing 30 kinship. This skill comes from Silverwind Nagakuga, so it's one of the more annoying ones to farm, but there are some other options that we'll talk about as well. But essentially, if you don't know, bleed is like a debuff status uh, that when you then follow up and attack a monster or a rider that has bleed on them, it removes the status and does an effective near double damage. It gives you a huge bonus percentage damage on the hit and removes the bleed. So bleed is a really, really good skill to be applying and then removing and then applying and then removing. So bleed skills are uber good in PvE, uber good in PvP. They let you one shot things in PvP. But for PvE, it just means that some turns you're basically dealing nearly double damage, which is really, really cool. So Silverwind Nagakuga with Vacuum Blast is one of the ways to get it. Uh, another option that you will have here is on my Nogagonte, my PvE Nogagonte here, we have Thousand Blades. This is a heavy damage to one enemy, high chance to bleed. So this is a single target option to apply bleed costing 24 kinship. So this is probably the best single op like attack option for bleeding. However, uh, you get this on Seregios, but Seregios also has another move that has bleed on it. So if we find a random Seregios that I've got here, you'll see here that he's got Thousand Blades, which obviously comes on Seregios every single time, but he's also got shredded uh, Shredding Scales, which is another medium damage, uh, medium bleed chance to all enemies. So this is kind of like Vacuum Blast, but it's a technical attack and it only has a medium chance instead of a high chance, but it does cost five less kinship. So overall, I think I think bleed is probably the best or one of the best statuses in the game. And Thousand Blades from Seregios is your best single uh, target option. Meanwhile, your best AoE option is going to be Vacuum Blast from Silverwind Nagakuga. So bleed skills are not something to sleep on. And if you can incorporate them into your PvE rotations, you're going to see a huge damage increase. So that's the first skills to talk about, things that apply apply bleed effectively, and it's going to be really useful for Kolv Taroth coming up as well, if it has a lot of HP, which I'm assuming it will, because it's like a monster that's covered in gold, and uh, usually in world you have to remove the mantle, which is the gold, in order to defeat the sort of lizard monster underneath. So bleed skills, really, really good. The next one that we're going to talk about is going to be multi-status inflicting skills. So uh, to my knowledge, there aren't that many of them in the game that actually can apply multiple statuses in one individual hit. There are several skills uh, such as the Emerald Kongala's, um, like, I can't remember what it's called, it's called Stench or something like that. It does like uh, a breath attack that can either apply Stench or apply Burning, uh, or Blast Blight, sorry, it's Blast Blight or Stench. And while that one can do either status, it I don't think it can do both on the individual hit. Meanwhile, you guys know it, one of my favorite genes in the game, Arachnophobia. Uh, very early on, I found this skill, uh, and I just thought that this looks like one of the most insane skills in the game, and I think it actually still is. It's a 13 cost, very cheap technical attack option with medium damage, but can apply poison slash uh, paralysis, and it can actually do both of these on the same hit. So pairing it with like inflict rate up is really, really good. But Arachnophobia from Shrouded Narcilla, and we have a farm video already up on the channel. If you don't know where to farm this move, there's a video on the channel for it, but uh, this is a really good move for PvE. So you can apply poison 
and paralyze and have a really cheap technical attack option and pvp it just becomes insane because paralyze is so strong in pvp and getting an extra poison as well is really really nice and medium damage for 13 kinship cost is just so good uh there are a couple other skills that can seemingly apply multiple statuses i think um i think uh my Mizu has one of them if we can find it. Uh, Bewitching Bubbles, here we go. A chance to lower speed and accuracy, and there's an, a couple other water attacks that can also apply multi uh, statuses as well. So there's a few options, and this Bewitching Bubbles comes from Mizu as well. There's a few options for these multi status moves, and they can generally be really, really strong, but I do think that uh, Arachnophobia is probably probably my favorite best one it's so so powerful so don't sleep on these multiple status inflicting skills like arachnophobia so that's our second one to talk about but the third one to talk about is actually going to be buffing skills if you guys aren't using buffing skills on your monsties i hate to say it but i think you're doing it wrong guys some of these buffs are incredibly powerful you're looking at 50 up to 70 percent bonus damage on your hits so when you have a skill such as pump up which again is on my pve nagagante here pump up is so incredibly strong i have a standalone video on the channel uh comparing pump up against amplify power so pump up comes from devil joe amplified power comes from rajang they're both buff skills that this one increases attack but lowers defense and amplify power increases all elemental attack and we compared the percentage differences and sort of the trade-offs of the two on that standalone video but we have to talk about the buff skills in this one because pump up amplify power or other moves like uh, i think there's like high voltage uh valiant flare that i use on my teostra build uh, there's various different types of elemental buffs that you can go with as well but they are so so powerful particularly ones that last for more like more turns so pump up's really good because it lasts for five turns again comes from devil joe meanwhile something like valiant flare that comes from pink rathian uh is really good too you can see here it's a five turn fire attack and defense increase with a two turn power increase so that valiant Valiant Flare, if I can say it correctly, is such a good buffing move as well if you have any fire monsters. So think about the upcoming uh, Hellblade Clavinus, obviously like Teostra, uh, Dread Queen, uh, Rathian are all really good contenders for Valiant Flare. Meanwhile, something like Pump Up can actually work on anything. It just straight up increases your attack. Meanwhile, something like Amplify Power can also work on anything, but only lasts two turns, but only costs 10. Uh, one thing to remember as well, certain ones, uh, fortunately Amplify Power doesn't do it, but Pump Up will also apply the visual change on your monster. So if you have Nogagonte, he'll go spiky. If you have Bloodbath Diablos, he'll go like uh, red. If you have uh, something like Velcana, it'll get the Ice Mantle. So, or like Teostra, like starts actually going on fire. So these buff skills not only give you that visual change, but also give you a huge, huge percentage increase to your attack and whatever other stats that they give. So uh, I definitely like to include at least one buffing skill on my monster builds if I can. Uh, failing that, there are other moves that are kind of like similar to buffing skills like White Shadow, which is another Silverwind Nagakuga skill. This one lets you an evade, evade and attack, but when you fully upgrade it, you can evade two attacks for two turns. So a multi-turn evasion skill is very good as well. It's kind of like a trade-off if you want to go for evasion or increased attack depending on what you're fighting or if you're on PvE or PvP. But buffing skills are so powerful and uh, Pump Up in particular is probably one of the, if not the strongest buffing skill in the game. So don't sleep on those buffing skills in your builds. But next up, we have to talk about Defense Down. So if you don't know, there's a few moves in the game. There aren't many of them, but there's a few in the game that can apply Defense Down uh, on enemy monsters or riders if you're in PvP. And for both PvP and PvE, they are very powerful. They effectively act like a increased modifier to your damage. If you're lowering their defenses, you're increasing your own damage. So when you have a move that you use to attack something and it has that chance to apply defense down, it's a win-win for you if you get the defense down because then your subsequent attacks are going to improve even further. When you pair something like defense down with a debuff like bleed, you're just dealing even more and even more damage and then you pump up and you're just your damage just goes off the charts so a move such as uh if i can 
if I can find it. I think my Nergigante has it. Here we go. Hellbreaker. This is a non-elemental speed attack, costs 22. Heavy damage to one enemy with the low chance to greatly lower their defense for three turns. So Hellbreaker is quite an annoying one to farm because it's a Bloodbath Diablos move, so you have to use your SR tickets to get it because it's from a Deviant. However, that greatly lowered defense for three turns is a big buff to you, and as like an attack when you need to do a speed option, having that chance to lower defense as part of your rotation is just another way to increase your DPS and is really, really good in the long run. There are a few other options to lower the enemy's defense. I believe, uh, I don't, I can't show it here, but I think Volcana has an ice move uh, that increases his defense, but there are some other moves that actually lower the enemy's defense and you can look through the Book of Genes to find those, but uh, Bloodbath Diablos is one is a really good one and I use it on my Nogagonte. So keep an eye out for those defense down moves because they are effectively the same as just giving you an attack buff while it's applied on the enemy. So they're really, really good. Then we do next have to talk about high critical chance moves. Uh, if you don't know, some moves have baked in high crit chance. I think a really common one that you'll see a lot of people using will be Ruinous Strike. This is from Nergagonte. It has baked in medium damage with high crit chance, and it does crit fairly often. But there are several moves in the game that actually have a high crit chance like this, and they're just really good for increasing your damage. Imagine you've applied uh, defense down to an enemy, then you've applied bleed on them, and then you're about to hit them with a high crit chance move to double the to like hit the crit, double it with the uh, bleed to be dealing even higher damage with defense down. And imagine that you're pumped up the whole time. You're just gonna be dealing crazy high amounts of damage. And it's pretty much the way that you want to be doing PVE if you can help it. And it, it works in PVP as well. It's just harder to set up a long combo like that in PVP. But Ruiner Strike is a really good option. There's also Killer Tackle, which is a Gravios skill, also has high crit chance baked in. Some other elemental attacks have it too, like Plasma Pressure, uh, which comes from Ivory Lagiacris, has high crit chance baked in. And obviously duping them up often increases their crit rate as well, although the Gravios one doesn't get increased crit rate when you dupe it up. But high critical chance moves are really, really good ones that you don't want to sleep on, because uh, crits are like a huge damage increase so if you can do them more reliably, then uh, you definitely should be if you can help it. So high crit chance moves are definitely one to take note of. But the final moves that I want to talk about are now going to be the Sonic moves. So if you don't know, something like Kushala has moves such as Sonic Strike. So Sonic Strike T, Sonic Strike Technical is Kashala's move. It rolls on Kashala, so you have to get Kashala eggs to get this move. Uh, it's a light ice damage move with a very high chance to strike first. There's also other elemental type genes that have this effect. There's Monobolus uh, has a, I think it's a speed non-elemental gene. Meanwhile, Rajang has a power uh, non-elemental gene with high chance to strike first. So there's quite a few different variations of these sonic strikes. But what makes these moves so good are that in PvP, these moves have higher priority than items do. So specifically for PvP, this move can be really, really good for basically finishing off an enemy before they can heal up uh, because items usually go before attacks. So if they're low, they drink a potion, you attack them, they don't die. But with a Sonic Strike move, you hit them before they use a potion. So not only do they die and lose a heart, but they waste their turn as well. So Sonic Strike moves are really good for PvP. Meanwhile, the bleed moves, the multi-status moves, the buffing moves, the high crit chance moves are really good in PvE and also apply to PvP as well. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, we've talked about all of my sort of best skills in the game that I would use on my monster builds and all that kind of stuff. But if you have any other good genes that you know about, let me know in the comments down below and we'll sort of learn together. But I hope this was very helpful. I don't see a lot of people using some of these moves in their builds. And when you're doing PvE, applying defense down, doing bleeds, high crit chance moves, buffing your monster, it's sort of, the bread and butter, it's the foundation to just be destroying things. So I hope that I see more people using those skills after this video. I hope it was really helpful to you guys. And if you do enjoy these videos, drop a like and subscribe down below for more like this. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash paradise central. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one and I'll see you guys in the next one.